Hey guys, welcome to Natural Beauty Queen's channel. Um, today I'm just going to be discussing with you um, what the seven deadly sins of natural hair are. Now, this is just my personal opinion of what they are. Um, from um, I've, I've compiled this list from you know my own personal experiences, my hair, also being around other naturals, my friends, and my family. So these are the things that I think that. Um, you know, are what we what we do the most and what we can do to help prevent it. You know, so these are some things I want to discuss with you about. Now and the first one I want to discuss is split ends. Now, split ends. I mean, everyone gets them pretty much. Everyone gets them. It comes from you know, daily, daily manipulation of your hair. Um, it's when your strands they split. I mean, sometimes you can also um, you can also consider split ends as like knots and stuff like that. You know, there's a chart which I probably put on this video. It's a chart of all kind of different split ends that you have. Basically, all you need to know is trim them, trim them, trim them, trim them. Um, that's like the only for sure way of curing it, you know. Um, so you need to you need to make sure that your hair is trimmed. Now don't over trim. I don't over trim. Uh, now some people on YouTube I see that they trim their hair themselves, but I'm not one of them. Not right now anyway because my hair is not to a length where I can see the ends of my hair. So I go you know, go get it professionally done, you know, maybe, you know, once out of, once every three months, um, from someone that I trust to now cut my hair and just cut the split ends. So, that's what you need to do. Now, there are some products out there that claim to, you know, to fix them and prevent them. Now, one in particular that I just saw to come out at commercials is called Nexus Pro Mend. Now, I actually bought some of that. I bought the leave-in. So, I didn't want to buy all of them, which I probably it probably has better results when you buy all of them. Now, I bought the I bought the um the Nexus Pro Men leave-in conditioner. Um I've used it a couple of times. Can't say I've seen so much I can't say that I've seen, you know, any really good results um i haven't seen anything it's just something i put on the ends of my hair so i mean i'm hoping that it's preventing it but i mean i don't really have that much faith in it so in the end trim your hair it'll grow back and it'll go back healthier if you don't trim it all it's going to do is it's going it can travel up your hair shaft and cause your hair to look damaged um and unhealthy you know so trim your edges trim your ends excuse me all right now the next one is chemical damage now chemical damage since you're natural or you're transitioning to being natural or whatever your case may be you know the most chemical damage that you've already gotten away from is getting away from the relaxers, you know, you know, getting, <laughs> you know, getting your addiction away, taking your addiction away from the creamy crack like you don't need anymore. So that's the one good thing I can say about being natural. You don't have to worry about um, all those chemicals um, from the perm. Now, if you watch Good Hair, you know, with Chris Rock a couple years back. There was this one scene where they put aluminum can of Coca-Cola in the solution for the relaxers that we put that we were putting on our scalp, and it ate through the can. Like so, can you imagine what it's doing to our fragile hair strands in our scalp? But I don't need to discuss that because you're natural, like me. Are you going natural? Are you thinking about being natural? So, but being natural doesn't, you know, stop you all chemical damage. Now, if you're thinking about color treating your hair or color, or, or color treating your hair, you need to take that very seriously. You need to 
do a lot of your research. You know, decide whether you want to do a semi-permanent or a permanent or uh, rent, temporary, whatever. Um, color on your hair. Um, if it depends on what color you're trying to go. If you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to, if your hair is black or dark brown like mine, and you're trying to go to a blonde or a red, I mean, and you're trying to make it permanent, you have to lift, you know, lift the, the outer layer of your hair shaft. So it's more than likely you have to have a permanent, more than likely you're going to have to do some type of bleach or something. So be very careful with that. Do your research. If you're going to do it yourself, you have to do your research. Just don't take it lightly, you know, because you can really damage your hair and your whole, you know, year, you know, however long you've been natural is down the drain because you want to start over because your hair looks like crap because you damage it so if you're not if you if you don't want to take out the time to do your research then you need to go seek out a professional colorist you know not just you know not just a you know a regular person i would say i would suggest strongly suggest that you see a colorist because a colorist has went to school they have you know uh, learned and educate themselves about you know color and how is it impacts your hair and what blends with it and so you really need to see a colorist if you don't want to do the research yourself and take that time I take that risk okay um, <clears throat> number three I'm sorry I'll keep looking because I'm looking at my notes making sure I'm staying on task because I don't want to go off into a tangent so, number three, as I say, is product overload. I'm going to say product overload is a really big issue in the hair community. Not just the natural hair community. It might be even bigger than the natural hair community, but it's just, it's just big. I know when I was relaxed, I still had, I had products. I, and then becoming natural just made it worse. Only because being natural as an adult... <laughs> It is, um, it's a new experience at first. So you don't, you're trying to, you're trying to figure out what works, what, what works best for your hair. Um, you know, you're looking at other people's experiences. If you're, if you're looking at YouTube, you're looking at other people's experience and you're, you know, seeing that they have similar hair to yours and going by the products that they use so you you know you tend especially when you're new when you first you know do the big chop or you know whatever you do um when you first you know are completely natural you tend to just go out and buy stuff buy products but i mean that's the issue not only on your pocket because dang that's a lot of money like I remember, <laughs> I remember when I first became natural, the first thing I wanted to do was I went straight to Whole Foods and got me some kinky curly, got the shampoo, leave-in, um, the custard, I got all of that. And then to find out, it wasn't even all that, like, it ain't, I wasn't even really that impressed with the results, which is good for me because I realized, like, look, you don't even need to spend all this money on products. There's other stuff out here in the world that is way cheaper, that works better. So, I mean, you just got to find out what's best for you. So, my best thing is if when, when you want to try a new product, you got to get that product some time so you can actually see the results. You need to try it in all kind of ways. Like if, you, if you try, um, for example, the Jessie's, Miss Jessie's Curly Pudding, if you try that product and um you know it might not work out well it might not work out with um you know with other products you need to test that you need to see if it looks good like if it's a good definer for your twist outs if it's good you know you know to just define your natural curl if you want to shingle your hair with it i mean just experiment with it and see what it really can do before you just write it off and go buy another product all right and um, what else I want to say about those products? I don't know. Mm, that's it. <laughs> that's it, basically, about product overload. And if I remember what I want to say, I'll come back to it. Number four, dryness. Now, I know most naturals know this is what they real with their, with, their, with their own hair. That... 
African-American hair tends to be dry. Unlike other races and other hair types, um, you know, our hair thrives on natural oils. Our hair likes it, you know. Um, so you got to keep your hair, keep your hair moisturized. Um, I mean, whatever you, whatever you use, I mean, I know this is a new thing with, uh, you know, people going back to grease. If that, if you use grease, personally, I don't, but you know, figure out what you need to do to keep your hair moisturized and conditioned. Um, you know, I have, I have a thing of shea butter, you know, I make, you know, you make your own shea butter whip. Um, actually have this this is a uh, spray bottle I've gotten up what I've done with it is I've just added um, water uh, a vegetable glycerin olive oil tea tree oil you know jojoba oil whatever you want do your research and see what these oils do to your hair and what you need done from you know from you touching your hair and using your hair figure out what you want you can make your own mix and it's not even that expensive like i mean because that you don't need you don't need that much oil to put in it you know what i'm saying because it'll last a long time so your investment will be worth it and actually what i do is in my water you know you add water with this um i like to use bottled water because you know unless you have a filter which i don't you know, it has, it has some hard, it has some hard water in there. So I just, you know, I just want to stay away from the chlorine and all the other stuff that they're putting in the water. And um, I wash my hair with it. That's enough. So I don't want to, you know, overdo it by putting that, you know, all that stuff, that kind of water, tap water, on my hair. So I just, you know, put a you know, bottle of water in it as well. With this, this is just water. Now I use this pretty much every day. Now water to me is my met is like my best i don't know my best moisturizer i love it my hair loves water it works better with water so i just put you know bottled water here so these two things are my lifesaver and then if your hair is really dry you can go with you know you can do your shea butter whip, which i have to make some more and i will be recording that how i made my shea butter whip. okay And one last thing before I go to the next one, I mean, you want to just keep your hair moisturized because I mean, once once your hair starts to get so dry, it becomes very it becomes very brittle and the tint it will break off and it doesn't look good. So why you want to why you want to want to walk around looking like a brittle brush? It's not cute. So stop it. 